Hi everyone, Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 218 of the Managing Uncertainty podcast, I want to talk about how you can have more influence, more influence as a subject matter expert in the C-suite and with your board of directors. And I, I think this is applicable for any subject matter leader like a chief information security officer, a director or VP of business continuity, a director or VP of crisis management or crisis communications. Achieving influence in the boardroom and among C-suite executives involves a combination of strategic acumen, effective communication, and probably most importantly, alignment with business objectives, with your organizational strategy and objectives. So here are 10 ways in which you can accomplish that. First, you need to speak the language of business. To resonate with the C-suite and with your board, it's essential that you can translate technical or specialized information, the jargon, the lexicon you use in your day-to-day -day communication into terms that align with the business objectives, growth, profitability, risk mitigation, mission success. You wanna be able to speak the language of business. Number two, you need to quantify the impact that you're having. Provide quantifiable metrics that tie into your organization's key performance indicators, your KPIs. Whether it's cost savings from risk mitigation or the potential return on objective, return on investment rather, or economic value add of an initiative, numbers will often speak louder than words. Number three, summary, executive summaries. When, while your team needs details in order to operationalize an initiative, the C-suite and the board they want the distilled essence. What is the most candid, most clear way that you can explain what it is that you're trying to get to? So create succinct executive summaries that highlight key points, actions that are needed, and implications for the business. Number four, regular reporting. You need a cadence for regular reporting that aligns with the business cycle. That might be uh, a consistent avenue. This is a consistent avenue that keeps the board and the C-suite up to date. It makes them more likely to consider your perspective when making decisions. Number five, create alliances. You need to forge strategic alliances in your organization in the C-suite. That could be your CFO, your CMO, your COO, or another C-suite executive. Having an ally can significantly influence can significantly enhance your influence. They're your champion. This may be your executive that you report up into, or this may be another person who has a better understanding of how risk impacts the organization. Number six, professional development. Think about training in areas like strategic management or financial analysis, things that can broaden your understanding of business concerns. And these can arm you with the lexicon, the toolkit needed to discuss issues at an executive level. I did this myself. When I decided to go to graduate school the first time, I chose to get an MBA. I didn't get a master's degree in criminal justice. That's my undergraduate degree. I didn't get a master's degree in emergency management. I got an MBA because when I looked above me in the organization, folks had either gone to law school or they got an MBA. And I wasn't going to law school. So it was a pretty clear... Uh, path for me, but it gave me the tools I needed to interact at that level. Number seven, take a consultative approach. Your role is consultative. You're a subject matter expert in a particular area that an organization needs. You should be able to offer solutions that specifically address the challenges you're being faced with in the business. Being a problem solver makes you a valuable partner when it comes to strategic decision making. Number eight, scenario planning. You can use scenario planning to illustrate potential outcomes, particularly in crisis management and business continuity, in crisis communications. Give vivid, concrete, realistic examples that can help your board and your C-suite grasp complex issues more easily. Number nine, be proactive, don't be reactive. Whether it's an upcoming change to regulation or it's identifying a new security vulnerability, being ahead of the curve and being proactive in your communications elevates your standing as a forward thinker in the organization. And finally, number 10, earn trust through transparency. In times of crisis or even during standard business operations, transparency is key. If there's bad news to deliver, then do so candidly, directly, and concisely, while also providing a well-considered plan to resolve the issue. 
Adopting these 10 strategies can enable CISOs and heads of business continuity and crisis management and other subject matter experts to elevate your influence at the board and executive level, fostering a more collaborative environment that will value your specialized expertise. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.